Welcome to part two of the slideshow about stratigraphy. Part one discussed the terminology and significance of the relationships between beds of sedimentary strata, the meaning of the term formation, the two nomenclatures for expressing age relationships, time and time rock, and an introduction to stages and their identification by E. fossils. The correlation of stages in widely separated marine areas often requires the use of more than just one key fossil to confirm their equivalency beyond question. This is so because each discrete area was subject to a unique regime of depositional environments so both the character and boundaries of the formations comprising the stage may differ considerably. Consequently, as these charts illustrate, to confirm the validity of a correlation, the existence in both localities of identical species of other fossil phyla may be adduced. The correlation of stages may be strengthened even further by establishing their relationship in time to one or more of four other entirely independent physical phenomena. All of these have ties to geochronologic time, so provide solid support to relative dates based on fossils. Shown graphically on these four slides, are the three causes of Milankovitch cycles. These are the effects on sedimentary successions and on glaciation of periodic cyclical changes in the tilt and direction of the Earth's poles, along with changes in the eccentricity of its elliptical orbit around the Sun. The effect of all three are reputedly recorded in sequential patterns of sedimentation, most easily recognized in the fine-grained clastics and foraminiferal oozes deposited in the deeper ocean and the varved clastics in lakes. But they are identifiable in many other sedimentary environments using tools other than repeated successions of climate-caused alternations of strata. Each of the three cycles has a fixed periodicity, and these next slides show that their patterns in a succession of sediments can be recognized by lithologic or oxygen-16-18 rhythms and collated with eustatic cycles and sequence stratigraphy. As these next slides show, a second way to relate chronostratigraphic stages to geochronologic time uses the frequent recurrence of a 180 degree change in the direction of the Earth's polarity. The iron oxides in igneous and sedimentary rocks, some of which can be dated precisely by isotopes, are aligned by the polarity in effect at the time they became rock. Although the timing of these changes in polarity was not regular, in older successions, there are long periods when reversal did not take place. It seems to have taken place more often during the Cenozoic era. There, uh, several have been proposed as golden spikes for stage boundaries. Their existence in strata worldwide and the fact that many are isotope dated makes them an invaluable aid for in addition to dating lithologic successions, they can be related to Milankovitch cycles, eustatic cycles, and the several elements of sequence stratigraphy. This slide of Mesozoic onlaps in the Alberta Basin of Canada demonstrates the use of third order eustatic cycles for correlation. These shorter cycles have been widely used 
to confirm the relative ages of Pleistocene coral reefs, but have served less commonly for correlation of older stages. But here is one such an attempt which indicates the times at which major sea wars were formed as they relate to global sea level at that same time. As you see, variations in sea level have been recorded and dated throughout Phanerozoic time. Chemistry, the fourth item in the list of independent geochronologic sources used to adjust chronostratigraphic time to geochronologic time has provided several useful tools. As this slide of water temperatures throughout the Phanerozoic illustrates, the relative proportions of O16 and oxygen-18 isotopes in the limestone shells of small marine organisms have been shown to be a reliable indicator of water temperature and the excursions of carbon-13 in the formations of Appian Age in Provence and Southern Europe have been used successfully to establish a precise continental marine relationship. And more generally, the patterns of gamma ray logs from wells and outcrop are widely used to demonstrate correlation of diverse strata. Volcanic tufts fall on both land and sea. Individual tephra are identifiable by the kind and percentage of trace elements in them. The example here is a correlation of bentonites in Estonian wells that drilled the older Paleozoic. Ancient Konkostraka, tiny bivalve branchiopods, their descendants still live in both fresh and brackish water, had their eggs disseminated widely by wind. And this provide another link for correlating marine and continental strata in areas as distant as Russia and Australia. And even more ubiquitous are the spores and pollen of plants, a field of study that demands intensive specialization Nevertheless, recognition of the limits of the standard marine stages in terrestrial deposits is usually difficult, but valid approximations can be made using high-resolution sequence stratigraphy in lakes in conjunction with weather and sedimentation patterns related to the climate changes that accompany long-lasting advances and retreats of the sea, and the worldwide occurrence of unusual quantities of a rare mineral in strata representing an instant of time provide not only the demonstration of the global effects of the large meteor strike, but offer a means of precise correlation as this Cretaceous tertiary boundary event demonstrates. Stratigraphic data must eventually be presented as a report to a state, business, or economic supervisory group, or to the editors of a printed journal or online publication. To help to do this, many conventions have been accepted. A basic one is the colors on a map or section that indicate the age of the rocks concerned. Two standards have been proposed, one by the United States Geological Survey, the other by the European International Geologic Association. Expeditions of stratigraphy are almost always accompanied by a map, a columnar section or both. This map of the geology of Texas is a summation of many maps drawn on a much larger scale. Here are some of the universally recognized symbols for sedimentary rocks. And from my time in Saudi Arabia, a columnar section of tertiary formations in a profile I used to locate structure. Next is a series about fossils. Part one concerns microfossils, a topic too complex for complete coverage in the allotted time.